Let us pray. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and with your eternal protection, sanctify your servants, for whom Christ your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please be seated. A 
reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so marred was his look beyond human, semblance his appearance beyond that of the sons of man. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless, for those who have not been told shall see. Those who have not heard shall ponder it. Who would believe what we have heard? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up like a sapling before him, like a shoot from the parched earth. There was in him no stately bearing to make us look at him, nor appearance that would attract us to him. He was burned and avoided by people. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Sorry. A man of suffering, accustomed to infirmity, one of those from whom people hide their faces, spurned, and we held him in no esteem. Yet it was our infirmities that he bore, our sufferings that he endured, while we thought of him as striking, as one smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our offenses, crushed for our sins, Upon him was the chastisement that makes us whole. By his stripes we were healed. We had all gone astray like sheep, each following his own way. But the Lord laid upon him the guilt of us all. So he was harshly treated. He submitted and opened not his mouth, like a lamb led to the slaughter, or a sheep before the shearers. He was silent and opened not his mouth. Oppressed and condemned, he was taken away. And who had have thought any more of his destiny? When he was cut off from the land of the living and smitten for the sin of his people, a grave was assigned him among the wicked and a burial place with evil doers. Though he had done no wrong nor spoken any falsehood, but the Lord was pleased to crush him in infirmity. If he gives life as an offering for his sin, he shall see his descendants in a long life, and the will of the Lord shall be accomplished through him. Because of his afflictions, he shall see the light in fullness of days through his suffering. My servant shall testify many and their guilt he shall bear. Therefore I will give him his portion among the great, and he shall divide the spoils with the mighty, because he surrendered himself to death and was counted among the wicked, and he shall take away the sins of many and win pardon for their offenses. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your justice, rescue me. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. Father, Father into your hands I commend my spirit. For all my foes, I am an object of reproach, a laughing stock to my neighbors, and a dread to my friends. They who see me abroad flee from me. I am forgotten like the unremembered dead. I am like a dish that is broken. Father, into your hands I cling to my spirit. But my trust is in you, O Lord, I say. You are my God. In your hands is my destiny. Rescue me from the clutches of my enemies. 
and my persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. Take courage and be stout-hearted, all you who hope in the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand for the gospel acclamation. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every other name. Please be seated. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden into which he and his disciples entered. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas got a band of soldiers and guards from the chief priests and the Pharisees and went there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, knowing everything that was going to happen, went out and said to them, Whom are you looking for? They answered him. He said to them, I am. Judas, his betrayer, was also with them. When he said to them, I am, they turned away and fell to the ground. So he again asked them, whom are you looking for? They said, the Nazarene. Jesus answered, I told you that I am. So if you are looking for me, let this man go. This was to fulfill what he had said. I have not lost any of these you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into his coward. Shall I not drink the cup that the father gave me? So the band of soldiers, the tribune, and the Jewish guards seized Jesus, bound him, and brought him to Annas first. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had counseled the Jews that it was better that one man should die rather than the people. Simon Peter and, other, and another disciple followed Jesus. Now the other disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered the courtyard of the high priest with Jesus. But Peter stood at the gate outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, went out and spoke to the gatekeeper and brought Peter in. Then the maid, who was a gatekeeper, said to Peter, you are not one of his man's disciples, are you? He said, 
I am not. Now the slaves and the guards were standing around a charcoal fire that they had made, because it was cold and were warming themselves. Peter was also standing there keeping warm. The high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always thought in the synagogue or in the temple area where all the Jews gather. And in the secret, I have said nothing. Why ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing there struck Jesus and said, Is this the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing there keeping warm, and they said to him, He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied it, and immediately the cock crowed. Then they brought Jesus from Caiaphas to the praetorium. It was morning, and they themselves did not enter the praetorium in order not to be defiled so that they could eat the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and said, What charge do you bring against this man? They answered and said to him, If he were not a criminal, criminal we, would we would not, not have, have handed, handed him, him over, over to you. To you. At this, Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves, and judge him accordingly to your law. The Jews answered him, We do not have the right to execute anyone. In order that the word of Jesus might be fulfilled, that he said, indicating the kind of death he would die. So Pilate went back into the praetorium and summoned Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants will be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king? Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth, listen to my voice. Pilate said to him, What is truth? When he had said this, he again went out to the Jews and said to them, I find no guilt in him, but you have a custom that I release one prisoner to you at Passover. Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? They cried out again, Not, Not this one, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a revolutionary. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown out of thorns and placed it on his head and clothed, him, and clothed him in a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him repeatedly. Once more, Pilate, Pilate went out and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you so that you may know that I find no guilt in him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple cloak. And he said to them, Behold the man. When the chief priests and the guards saw him, they cried out, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no guilt in him. The Jews answered, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he made himself the son of God. Now, when Pilate heard this statement, 
He became even more afraid and went back into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus did not answer him. So Pilate said to him, Do you not speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and I have power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. For this reason, the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Consequently, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release him, you are not a friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was preparation day for Passover, and it was about noon. And he said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Take Take him away, take take him away, away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus in the middle. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Now many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, They took his clothes and divided them into four shares, a share for each soldier. They also took his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top down. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but the passage of the to see who is to be. In order that the passage of scripture might be fulfilled that says, They divided my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. This is what the soldiers did. Standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple there, whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. After this, aware that everything was now finished, in order that the scripture might be fulfilled, Jesus said, I thirst. There was a vessel filled with common wine. So they put a sponge soaked in wine on a sprig of hyssop and put it up to his mouth. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, It is finished. And bowing his head, he uh, he handed over the spirit. Let us kneel and pause for a while. Now, since it was preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath day of that week was a solemn one, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs be broken and that they be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and then of the other one who was crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one soldier thrust his lance into his side, 
and immediately blood and water flowed out. A night witness has testified, and his tes testimony is true. He knows that he is speaking the truth, so that you also may come to believe. For this happened so that the scripture passage might be fulfilled. Not a bone of it will be broken. And, another, and again another passage says, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, secretly a disciple of Jesus for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate if he could remove the body of Jesus. And Pilate permitted it, so he came and took his body. Nicodemus, the one who had first come to him at night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about 100 pounds. They took the body of Jesus and bound it with burial cloths, along with spices, according to the Jewish burial custom. Now, in the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb, in which no one had yet been buried. So they laid Jesus there because of the Jewish preparation day, for the tomb was close by. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, many people are carrying the burdens, the burdens of fear, the burdens of suffering, anxiety, and loss. But remember that we are not alone. The mystery of God's love is not that our pain is taken away, but that God first wants to share that pain with each one of us. Lent is not about suffering and sacrifice. It is a corridor to new life. Good Friday is not about evil or pain or death. It is a door that Jesus opens to invite each one of us to that new life. Even in suffering, God uses our sufferings to help us to grow, to grow in compassion, persistence, and ministry. Our sacrifices help us to learn discipline so that we can purify our will and grow stronger in holiness. But the journey, the journey is not your destination. Lent or Good Friday is all about reaching the resurrection, renewing our faith, entering into a new life and free of our sins. Reconciling damaged relationships and living in the Spirit of God more than we ever, ever did before. In this sense, let us take some moments to ask the Lord, to ask Jesus, to ask the Holy Spirit to help each one of us to discover healing, hope, remedy amidst our daily sufferings and dying. In our daily lives, there are many times we stumble or we fall. So this moment, we are invited to look at the crucifixion of Jesus and pray, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. So from that moment, I would invite Invite each one of you today, for the rest of the day, 
Continue to say this prayer. Pray into our heart, and we can say with Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. For the solemn intercession, I would like to invite you here in the church and also at home to stand up. Thank you. For Holy Church, let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to God her and to unite her throughout the whole world and grant that leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God, God the Father Almighty. Almighty ever-living God, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, Watch over the works of your mercy, that your church spread throughout the world may preserve with the steadfast faith in confessing your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the Pope, let us pray also for our most holy father, Pope Francis, that our God and Lord, who chose him for the order of bishops, may keep him safe and unharmed for the Lord's Holy Church to govern the holy people of God. Almighty ever-living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him, the Christian people, governed, governed by you, their maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the unity of Christians, let us pray also for, our, for all our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be pleased as they live the truth to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Almighty ever-living God, who gather what is gathered and keep together what, is, what you have gathered, look kindly on your flock of your son and that those whom one baptism has consecrated, may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the blood of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For those who do not believe in Christ, let us pray also for those who, who do not believe in Christ, that enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Almighty ever-living God, grant that those who do not confess Christ, that by walking before you with a sincere heart, they may find the truth, that we, and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, 
may be made more perfect witness to your love in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those who do not believe in God, let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that following what is right in sincerity of heart, they may find a way to God himself. Almighty ever-living God, who created all people to seek you by always, to seek you always by desiring you and by finding you come to rest. Grant we pray that despite every harmful obstacles, all may recognize the sign of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you. And so in gladness confess you, the one true God, father of our human race. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For those in public office, let us pray also for those in public office that our God and Lord might direct their minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of all. Almighty ever-living God, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world, the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, and freedom of religion may through your gifts be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For those in tribulation, let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out hunger, unlock prisons, loosen fetters, granting to travelers safety, to pilgrims return, health to sick, and salvation to the dying. Almighty ever-living God, comfort our mourners, strength of all who toil. May the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you, that all may rejoice, because in their hour, because in their hour of need, your mercy was at hand. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. For our cities and suburbs of Melbourne and Geelong, the wider regions, in our world at this time, especially the Holy Eucharist Parish community, that sickness, fear, and societal disorder may be avoided as we pray and work to counter the effects of coronavirus. Almighty and ever-living God, Grant to your people at this time courage in facing uncertainty, strength in facing adversity, and change healing in the place of illness, an eternal place to those who have died. Bless and sustain all who bring medical, spiritual, and civic care. May we evermore place our hope and trust in you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Behold the wall of the cross on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us adore him. Behold the wood of the cross 
on which hung the salvation of the world. Come, let us adore Him. Behold the wood of the cross, on which hung the salvation of the world. Now let us adore him. So now I would like to invite all of us to come forward and um, to bow down in front of uh, the cross. My dear brothers and sisters, at the Sefer commands and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. If you sit anything under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy, that partaking in this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you, through Christ our Lord. Please bow down for the blessings. May abundant blessings, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of the resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure through Christ our Lord.